So you move out to LA, you get a couple features, a couple commercials under your belt, um, and things are moving along for your career. Um, but in our career, I think we all have those moments that we remember where we kind of pivot, where we kind of meet someone or get on the right project that really kind of takes things off uh, in the right direction or the direction that we wanted to go in. Did you have a moment like that or moments that you can speak of that you kind of, you know, catapulted your career in the right direction? Absolutely, and I'll say this, and I think this is another kind of one of those, I talked about earlier, those nuggets of wisdom, and I think it was the late Vilmos Zygmunt who said it, and he said, and I don't know exactly what the correct wording of it, but he just, in essence, happened to shoot with the right director in the right movie at the right time, you know, and obviously he's a huge talent, but also there was that kind of serendipitous moments of yes. and these opportunities. Yes. And I think it was, I had a similar thing with the Mark and Jay Duplass because I knew of them from Austin. They knew of me. Um, when we were kind of in our formative years at UT, they were at UT. I think we were off by a couple years. I can't remember what year it was, but they had just done a movie called The Puffy Chair, which is a fucking amazing movie if you haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. And um, it was playing out here in LA at like the Pacific Design Center. And my, uh, my cousin was going to a screening. She's a mutual friend as well of theirs. And, um, basically dragged me to the screening of Puffy Chair. I was like, I'm not going, I don't want to go, and I had other things going on, and she didn't want to take no for an answer. So I went to the screening, I sat in there, and I watched this movie, and I was really blown away by this movie and the way it was photographed. And I, and I remember after the screening, I went up to Jay, who shot the movie and directed it, and I was like, I, you know, I work professionally as a director of photography, I've shot these movies, these commercials, and I would say, I would not change a single thing about the way that you photographed that movie. I thought it was absolutely perfect and captured the spirit of the movie. And if it was done any other way, it would not have been as good of a movie. Right. It added like this, this authenticity and realism. And he was, he laughed because he said he'd been on the festival circuit for a year. And he goes, every single festival I go to, I have a DP hand me their card and say, your movie's great. But when you're ready to shoot a real movie with real photography, call me. Wow. So we, of course, immediately bonded over, you know, over that movie, and in particular, the way it was photographed. Nice. And then, you know, with, with those guys, it, shortly thereafter, they had a movie called Cyrus, which you may have seen. Mm -hmm. um, John C. Riley and Jonah Hill, Marissa Tomei, and it was their first studio movie. And I had done a couple little studio movies at the time, and so the idea was like, how can we take the charm and the spontaneity of what you guys were able to do on this small scale and apply that to, you know, not a big movie, but a bigger studio movie, yeah. you know. Um, and so we went through this whole process of trying to kind of marry these two worlds. And at the time, it was also kind of the advent of the, the bigger digital sensors like the Red. Mm -hmm. I think MX had just come out, or no, the Red One. So it was kind of the advent of all that technology and how can we take this technology and apply it to your shooting style to facilitate this kind of movie that can happen very naturally and off the cuff and where we can roll for 20 or 30 minute takes and yeah. the cameras are small enough where we can, you know, hold them in these real environments and, yeah. um, and sensitive enough where we don't have to, you know, like bring in these huge lighting sources and, um, and craft awesome. a movie that way. So that's kind of how our, our relationship was born. And it's a, what a great lesson, I think, to be learned and like what you did is, is rather than as a DP that says, hey, I want to make your stuff better. It's like, no, you actually, as an artist, you felt something from their work, right? You right. like their approach. Absolutely. And that was, rather than just the opportunity of, hey, this is going to get me work, it's like, no, I want to work with these guys because I like what they're doing. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I got to say, truthfully, I don't think that it was ever motivated by, like, oh, I want to uh, work with these guys, or it was really a genuine yeah. appreciation of what they did. And I, you know, sure. and of course, it did lead to me doing however many movies and a TV show with those guys. And they're great and they're wonderful. And, yeah. you know, and, I, and I think it's also, it's connecting creatively, but also connecting just on a human level. Like I, you know, I feel like I get those guys and those guys get me and, and you know, and I know and specifically, I know what they're trying to do. And I know that there's some compromises and sacrifices from a cinematography standpoint to be able to accomplish what they want in these movies. And, you know, I think it's hard, hard to find a collaborator, somebody's like, you know what, okay, this you know, it may not be the most sculpted lighting or the perfectly framed shot, but it, it's gonna be the shot that best tells this story and is best for this moment in this movie. Mm -hmm. And finding somebody who appreciates that and is able to facilitate that. Is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I think if you were to ask them, they would say it's not an easy thing to do. Sure.
Right. I mean, there's there's ten guys out there who go, oh yeah, let this, you know, we can do this perfect frame and perfect, you know, that's that's the path of least resistance. It's trying to do something outside of that. I think that's often more difficult. Well, and we'll, so what was that like? I, I think you as a DP up until then, your work has been pretty polished, pretty stylized, very cinematic, and they had this cinema verite, snap zoom, handheld, organic approach. Right. What was that like as a DP in terms of a challenge, and and was it was it liberating? I mean, what what was it like doing that? I felt it was actually hard. Like I, you know, people ask me like, and I go, you know, after the fact, or go, oh, this must be so easy. You don't, you know, it's you don't lie, you know, you don't have to lie. To you. I'm like, it's actually, it's just the opposite. It's way harder because you're shooting with multiple cameras from different angles. You have, you know, actors like John Riley and Marissa Tomei, or you know, you gotta light these people. You can't just, you know, not. And so trying to light them in a way that also allows them to gives them the freedom to be in the space where they want to be, but also, um, you know, have, be able to visually tell the story. Like it's, it's super, super difficult. And I always like finding that style of shooting, I, you know, that's the first thing I correct people when they say is like, it's not easier, it's much harder. Cause you could just, you know, throw a bunch of light on it and shoot it, but sure. trying to create something that's crafted and organic and nuanced and interesting. Yeah. And that's where the, that's where the crux of the situation is. Yeah. Do a slow zoom when we start talking. Definitely about. slow zoom or snap zoom. Switch. Swack. Yeah. And then I think we did Jeff Who Lives at Home. Mm -hmm. And then we did the first season of Togetherness. Gotcha. Uh, the HBO TV show. Gotcha. Which I felt like Togetherness really was the culmination of where we kind of had finally arrived. I mean, I've already done like three movies at this point where we kind of had figure out, figured out the the best approach for us. Right. You know, where we kind of, we backed off on some of the zooming and then we added, you know, like we added in these other elements and we kind of hit this sweet spot. Yeah. What what were, what are some of those elements? I mean, what, what's the biggest difference between Dodeca, let's say, or even Cyrus, really, and togetherness in terms of your visual Well, strategy? we initially had this very kind of dogmatic idea that everything had to be handheld and, you know, uh, we had to use zooms rather than move the camera and physically. And it was just, and I, you know, I think that was born out of those guys of their original initial filming experience. And to, and they were, you know, a little reluctant to try out some more conventional approaches. At some point, I think you guys, you're, you, you're such good storytellers and you're such good writers and these actors are amazing and the performances you're getting are amazing. I think we can start to incorporate and infuse some more conventional techniques and mix them in with the handheld. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it will give you a, a greater depth in your visual language mm. and ability to kind of tell the story better and you know more specific to these uh, specific moments rather than just relying exclusively on this one technique. So um, I think that's kind of where things evolved with them and I think that's where they are now as they go into season two and things like that. So it was, I think it was, they had gotten at that point the confidence having had a couple uh, you know movies under their belt where they're like, okay, let's, let's, you know, give it a shot. And I think the, really the first turning point was in we shot the togetherness pilot. Mm. And I don't know if you remember, but the, sh the scene ends with oh, Amanda yeah. Pete yeah. and Steve Zissis, and they're in this living room, and they, you know, at this point, they're gonna stay there, they're gonna sleep on the couches. And I was like, let's go outside and shoot through the window and do a dolly shot where we just kind of slowly creep in, which would be outrageous on any yeah. Duplass. They're like, this is insane. They're, yeah. like, they're like, okay, let's just, you know, fuck it, let's Sick. try it. Yeah. So we did that shot. And it was pretty cool, but they were, you know, they were like, mm, I don't know, it's a little too on the nose for us. We probably won't use it. And of course, they used it. Yeah, and yeah. not only did they use it, all of a sudden, when the season started, we were using dollies, we were using Steadicam. It kind of like there was the, it opened the gate. Nice. To using some of these other tools. How are we supposed to do this? I would like to know we're in it together. Okay. Every director is different. Everyone, right. everyone has their own approach. Um, you know, Mark's in the, in the scene 90% of the time, Jay's at the monitors, but, um, you know, walk me through your guys' dynamic on set and your strategy. The, uh, as you said, I think it's different with every director. Yeah. And people ask me like, you know, what, like, how do you work with directors? I'm like, you really can't say because it's like, I, you know, I have some directors who are literally want to set every shot and be involved in the lens choices and the lighting and like very particular. And I have other directors who are like, they just want to work with the actors and you know you deal with the camera and the lighting and things like that. So there's such a broad spectrum. Um, I think Mark and Jay are somewhere in the middle. 
Um, and I would say definitely they both have opinions and are involved in the photography. Um, in particular, Jay is a little bit more on the technical side, but they're both, you know, I don't think they make very few decisions independently. It's usually uh, collaboratively. But I think the process for us is we, and it's gotten more specific as we have gone, but the, you know, the idea was like, we want to create an environment where these actors, especially initially, we want to create light a space and create an environment where these actors can um, move about and do what they want to do without restriction. We want to put the cameras in places where they're not going to see each other, yet are able to capture these moments. So, uh, you know, those are a lot of, those are some tall orders um, yeah. photographically. So what we would, initially we started doing, and this was kind of, I guess you would say, a bit of a compromise for them, was like, rather, because they don't want to rehearse the scene, because we want to shoot the rehearsal, like with them often the best material, I think, in their minds. And truthfully, comes from the first take or the rehearsal, sure. especially as improvised and spontaneous as some of these shoots are. So uh, we would come in with the actors into the room, and we would talk about where things might happen. Like, mm. oh, I might, you know, I might sit on this couch over here, and he's like, I might go over here and play my keeper. You know, like we'd have these things of where we would get a vague idea of where things might happen, although we'd be prepared in a larger scope to cover it if you know they end up in this corner over here. Um, and then based on that, we would decide where we were going to set our cameras. Um, and then on, based on where our cameras are, we decided we would establish our lighting. Now often with them, especially as things progressed and our relationship got, I think got better and tighter, more collaborative, we were able to talk about those things beforehand. Like, you know, there's a great window right here. If the scene were to play out here and we put the cameras here, um, even, you know, the window affords us a big soft source opportunity for these actors to move around where they need to move and do what they want to do. So I, gotcha. I feel like a lot of it just kind of came, you know, intuitively over the course of having worked together. Right. But in the, in this seems like the right approach, of course, too, is you start with story, you start with actors and where they feel like the story, things are going to go, and then you kind of adjust accordingly, and that's camera right. lighting, everything. Yeah. There's often times, you'll be shocked to hear this, that we question what the director's doing as a DP. Sure. And sometimes, you know, and sometimes we argue our choices. Um, either to success or failure. Yep. But I have to say that ultimately, at the end of the day, I'd say that I have learned or I've taken away is to trust the director. And I will definitely voice my opinion and I will definitely make suggestions that I feel are appropriate. But at the end of the day, there are decisions that are made that the director makes even contrary to what I am thinking. And I'm like, you know what? That's their, I guess, I, I maybe it's because of their thinking on the, the project on, more of a global scale, but for whatever reason, I feel like their intuition is their story that you are, you know, a part of. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, it seems to ring true. I'm sure there's exceptions, like there are to everything, but generally, it's uh, it's trust, and I think that ultimately trusting the director and what it is and what they're doing. <laughs>